All right. Hello, everyone. It's Zoe with the Grand Nebraska Foundation. Uh, first off, we want to thank everyone that's tuning in live. And if you're going to be watching the recording, we missed you live, but we're so happy you're watching the recording. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. As always, we'd like to thank Center for Rule of Affairs as they sponsor multiple of our trainings and without them, really none of these would be possible. Um, and if you're interested in contacting them, you can go to CFRA.org um, to get more information as to what they can help you with. Our featured sponsor for this month is U.S. Bank. Uh, we'd love to shout them out as they also help with sponsoring um, Market Tech and all that type of stuff. And again, without them, these would not be possible. And then our featured member is the Rustic Patch, which is located in Kearney, Nebraska. And they've actually been a member since 2016, so quite a while. Um, and as always, we love to shop local and it's holiday season, so we wanted to give them a special shout out. And then this week's presenter is Kirsten Hill of Fire Spring. She actually was a speaker at Market Tech as well, so she probably looks a little bit familiar. We are super happy to have her back. And yeah, so I'll go ahead and pass it over to you, Kirsten. Let me stop sharing my screen. All right. Fantastic. I just... Um just close my shades there for a second. So hopefully we won't have as much glare. I'm gonna share this and it looks like we're ready to go. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for uh, tuning in today. And let's talk a little bit of social media. This is a pretty packed uh, slideshow. If you have seen any of our other Fire Spring uh, presentations, you know that we like to pack it full of information. And so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get in here and, and get going. All right, this is me. I'm Kirsten Hill. I'm the director of nonprofit solutions, and I'm also one of our primary strategists here at Fire Spring. Um, I also work with a number of small businesses as well. And what I've really found over my career is that there are just so many uh, commonalities between nonprofit organization and small business organization. Um, but today, this entire presentation is going to really be geared toward uh, toward small businesses. All right, Fire Spring. We are located in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's where our headquarters office is located. We have another office in Omaha, Nebraska, and a, a third in Council Bluffs, Iowa. But we have clients in all 50 states in the United States and in about uh, 10 countries around the world. So Fire Spring is doing a whole lot from right here in the middle of everywhere. FireSpring provides strategic guidance that is activated through creative solutions in marketing, printing, and technology. So we have something in each of those areas. We have several different business divisions, and our goal, regardless of the area, is to help businesses and nonprofits to prosper. I came to FireSpring from the client side. I was actually a client for well over 15 years uh, with FireSpring. And part of the reason that I was excited to come here is FireSpring's commitment to doing more good. We are the first certified B Corporation in the state of Nebraska, which means that our company is certified for public benefit. We are committed to leveraging our people, our products, and our profits to do more good. The way that we express that is through what we call the power of three. FireSpring is committed to donating 1% of our profits. The top line revenue is donated to nonprofit organizations. 2% of our products are donated through in-kind products and services and 3% of our people. So every full-time employee at FireSpring, like myself, uh, we are all not only given, but expected to use eight hours every single month to volunteer for the nonprofit and charitable organizations of our choice. So as a company, FireSpring really walks this talk about doing more good in our communities. All right, here's the meat of the presentation. We are gonna to talk today about Social Media 101 for small businesses and organizations. And first of all, we are gonna talk about your website and what, and why, and how your website should really be the foundation for your brand. And um, it, it is foundational to actually also having a really good social media presence. And we'll talk about that. 
We're going to talk about the fundamentals of thought leadership and how you can utilize social media to build thought leadership for yourself or your business. Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, we're going to cover some best practices. And I also have some examples uh, from Instagram as well. So we'll talk about those primary uh, tools. We're going to talk about five tips for optimizing your social presence. And we'll finally wrap up with some action steps. I'm going to leave a few minutes at the end for Q&A. And uh, don't hesitate to throw those questions into the questions panel as you think about it. We'll address all of those at the end. If you happen to be tweeting today, you can use the hashtag powered by purpose. You can tag us at Firespring. If you don't know what tweeting is or how to use a hashtag, you're in the right place. All right, let's talk first about your website. Most small businesses tend to send visitors away from their websites as opposed to engaging with them on their websites. Uh, so instead of you know, getting people to come to your website and keeping them there, you may be then sending them off to someplace else. So maybe you have a third party blog that you're sending people to, or your store is set up through a different program. And so they they come to your website, but then they're shopping technically somewhere else, or maybe, um, you know, uh, event registration, email opt-in, uh, photo galleries, all those things. If you are not getting people to your website and keeping them on your website, that is problematic. Your website is really going to be your secret weapon when it comes to everything that you're doing to promote your brand and your business as a whole. So whether it is a sales flyer, search engine optimization that you're doing, your Facebook or Instagram, email marketing, blog posts, your directories, anything like that, Everything needs to direct back to your website. Your website needs to be the hub. And I'm, I'm got a really good example here in a little bit about why that's the case. But I just, we want to make sure we're a website company. And so I want to make sure that we give due attention to the fact that having a great website and using it as part of your social media strategy is really critical. Having great social media and a lackluster website is actually not helping you um, as much to maximize the efforts that you're doing on social media. Uh, there's also, we think and very firmly believe that landing pages are one of the secret weapons that uh, that you can use to maximize your website as well. So you might say, what in the heck is a landing page? And unfortunately, I didn't realize this was quite so hard to see. I'll explain it to you what it is. So a landing page is a page that someone goes to for a specific purpose. Um, so this example that I have here on the right is from Wax Buffalo. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They are a candle company located in Lincoln. I think they're just getting ready to open an, um, another storefront in Council Bluffs, but they have an online web page. They are promoting uh, tickets for a winter market. And if you go to waxbuffalo.com slash collections tickets, um, you actually go to a landing page that the only thing that exists on this page, you can't buy, you can't buy candles here. You can't do anything else. All you can do on this page is buy tickets for the winter market. That's a perfect example of a landing page. They're, they're, they have one purpose, to sell tickets to the winter market. When people get here, they're not distracted by everything else that's going on. They don't have a ton of other options. We're really just having one specific call to attention, which is buy tickets for this event. Um, that's what we mean by a landing page. What we find is that the organizations and businesses who utilize landing pages on their websites are among the most successful businesses that we have the opportunity to interact and work with. So if you are not using this fantastic strategy, um, you're probably missing out. So make sure that your website has the ability to create landing pages and that your website is the core foundation for all of your branding and marketing efforts. The next thing we're going to talk about is thought leadership. And thought leadership is really it, it is a, taking a person or a couple of people uh, within your organization, and those are folks whose views on a particular subject or maybe a product that you, that you create or sell um, are taken to be authoritative and influential. Uh, it is really going beyond just, um, just 
you know, this person is talking about an issue or talking about a, a business and, and it's raising the level um, and the profile of that, that individual. So when I think about thought leadership, I think about our president and CEO, Jay Wilkinson. And I think that there are very few other uh, businesses who have done as good of a job as Firespring and Jay have done at establishing Jay as a thought leader. Uh, he speaks frequently when he um, posts about business, when he posts about B corporations, when he posts about doing more good as a business partner, when he posts about conscious capitalism, all of those things help to raise the profile of of Jay and consequently of Firespring. Uh, and it really is is um it is lending authoritation um uh, it's lending an authoritative air and also influence to the work that that we do and that he does on behalf of firespring so think about what ways you might be able to provide thought leadership Keep in mind that thought leadership is not about like a single campaign. It, it is really a commitment to um, speaking about owning and maintaining a specific place um, and, and a specific messaging uh, about your organization. So the commitment means that you want to stay loyal to the things that you said you were going to do. Uh, and long after, you know, the mood has sort of left you, you want to you want to be really consistent about the things that you that you talk about, that you promote, um, all, all of those things. So think about how you might be able to be a thought leader. Is it something, are you a thought leader related to the entrepreneurial operating system that you use? Are you a thought leader about how you approach uh, your interaction with your community? Are you a thought leader for the culture you've built within your business? Are you a thought leader around the specific products that you build? Whatever it is, think about how you might be able to enter into that thought leadership space uh, so that you can elevate, elevate the profile and the brand of your organization as a whole. When we think about social media, these I, I think are still the primary tools that we think about. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Pinterest, and Instagram. If you are familiar with social media at all, you will know that number one, this list is not exhaustive. And number two, it's a constantly moving target. So keep in mind that if you are brand new to social media and you're just starting out, you are going to want to, you know, try and stay apprised of what's happening in the world of social media so that you will know and understand and, and, um, and have a good idea of which of these platforms you want to put your time and effort into. And, and also know that that's not something that once you make that decision, it's going to stay around forever. Uh, I think about that, particularly in relation to Twitter right now. There's so much happening with Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter and some of the changes that are happening on that platform. Um, we're starting to see some of the businesses that we work with pull away from Twitter, not have as much as an, of an emphasis on that platform, and put their efforts into uh, another platform platform. So it's just something you want to constantly be aware of. The other thing that I don't have listed here is TikTok, which I think is a sweet spot for businesses and small businesses, but it is also a dedicated platform that probably needs its own 90 minute webinar. It is a whole thing that we don't have time to get into. Um, if you are new to social media, just dipping your feet in because this is social media 101. So I'm assuming everybody is new to social media. If you are just dipping your, your toe in the water, I would not go into the TikTok pool yet. I don't think you're quite ready for that. So uh, if you look at social media 102 uh, and then some other trainings that we're putting together right now, uh, we're going to delve into TikTok a little bit more in 2023. But as of right now, it's not one that I'm really going to spend much time talking about today. If you're not already an active social media user, you might wonder why people are engaged in social media. So the primary reasons why the global internet and, and social media is not just exclusive to the United States, it really is a global phenomenon. And users between the ages of 16 and 64 use social media for a variety of reasons. About a third of them like to stay up to date with current news and current events. Uh, sometimes it's just about finding something funny or or engaging with entertaining content. I have a couple of uh, of platforms 
Twitter for me is that funny and entertaining content area. Um, I follow a, a, like things you don't show your cat and and a couple of other just like really random things that are just funny videos. That's my go to. That's what I use Twitter for. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes I'm looking just for that kind of content. Uh, and some people just do it to fill up spare time. Uh, if you, you know, are waiting in line at the DMV or whatever it is, uh, those are the, the primary reasons. So news, stay connected with friends and family, uh, find entertaining or funny content or fill up their spare time. And the content mix should really look like this. So about 80% of the content that you're putting out needs to be educational, it needs to offer solutions, and it needs to be something that entertains your audience. The other 20% needs to be about promotion. And, and so I think that's the other thing is when you look at this list, I'm going to go back a slide here briefly. When you look at this list, where on this list does it say that people are coming to social media because they want to be sold to? It's not there, right? Because that's not the primary reason why people are coming to social media. They are coming to social media for these reasons. Stay connected, be entertained, fill up their spare time. They are not necessarily coming to be sold to. So when you are putting together your content mix of things that you are going to be putting out on, on the, the social you know, channels, make sure that you're thinking about educating, offering solutions, and entertaining people. And really only about 20% of your posts should be about sales or promotion. So if you're looking through your existing social media right now and every single post is buy now, here's this product, like everything is, is really salesy and, and heavily sales driven, I would scrap some things, clean it up and, and try to move more into a content mix as opposed to just being sales related. When you provide, you want to be sure that your posts are providing value. So, you know, educate, entertain, expire, inspire. Don't just be about sales. You want to try and use popular content. So within each of these social media um, platforms, there are different content formats. So one is stories and Instagram and Facebook stories. There's also stories on Snapchat as well. They tend to be um, quick snippets. There's not a lot of text usually involved with them. Uh, they are going to come up and exist on, on, the, on the platform for about 24 hours, and then they disappear. They go away. Um, now, not everything completely disappears, but for the most part, they go away. It's very difficult to, to re-access that information. Uh, and people tend to scroll through the stories very rapidly. Um, but it can be a really great place to share, to share something quick and fun. Uh, there are carousels, which are series of, of photos that go together. You see carousels a lot on Instagram. You see them on LinkedIn as well. Um, and it typically is, is more than just a single post. There are multiple posts that go together and, and you're stringing together content, education, information. Uh, and video is still and I think probably always will be king. Anytime you can incorporate video content, uh, you are, are just really capturing uh, the attention of your audience and the, and the eyeballs of the people you're trying to share your information with. Uh, you're really capturing that in a way that you can't do any other way. So whenever possible, utilize video. And you want to think about, you can't include everything in every single social media post. So you want to think about content nuggets. You're just providing a little bit of information. It's not a whole chicken strip. It's just a nugget. Uh, it's just a little bit of information that you're sharing um, repeatedly, um, multiple pieces over a period of time. Uh, and, and think about how you can bucket uh, that content, or, or sometimes we refer to content pillars, and you're, you're providing that content in separate areas, but it's not all at once. Uh, every single social media post that you do should not tell every single um, viewer about absolutely everything that you do and who does it and how it's and how it happens. You need to just drip the information over a period of time. Think about what goals you want to establish if you're going to enter into this social media realm. So what are your business goals? Do you want to turn customers into advocates so they are singing your praises without you having to ask them to? 
Do you want to drive traffic to your website or some sort of a lead generation tool so that you can do top of funnel uh, recruitment and marketing? Is your goal to retain your customers? Maybe you're bringing your customers in, in from another way, but then you want a way to connect with them, build a relationship, and ultimately retain them long term. Or are you all about growing the business, growing your brand, spreading the word about who you are and what you do? Establish in advance what your goals are. Um, is it engagement? Is it conversation? Is it awareness? Uh, so be really intentional about why you're on social media and what goals you want to achieve. There are a number of metrics that you can track when you're looking at what your goals are. Uh, things like follower count, reach or engagement, like how many people are viewing your posts, how many people are interacting with them through likes or, you know, likes and, and comments and shares, all of those things. Uh, are they mentioning you in their own posts? Uh, all of these things are metrics that you can track. And I think it's great to establish what is your goal and then what is the metric that you want to use to track that goal? Uh, downloads of, of gated content if you're utilizing um, some sort of a lead generation tool. All right, we should all have target audiences. One of the things that I find when I work with clients that we all make the mistake of doing is we get so excited about the, what we are doing that we want to tell everyone about all of these cool things that our business does. And we forget that we need to really hone the messaging for the target audience. Because if we're just telling them how great we are, then we're the hero of the story. But everyone in our own lives are the heroes of our own story. So when they see all of these great things out there, they think, oh, that's great. Look at all those cool things they're doing. But they don't see how they interact into the story. And so identifying who your target audience is, what the messaging is that you're trying to share with those audiences is really critical. You can develop um, a marketing tool called personas where you actually almost create like fictional characters and you uh, then you target your information, your social media posts to each of those personas. So for instance, um, you might have a persona that is Sarah Brown and she is a, a brand new customer that you've never had before. Um, what kind of messaging are you going to put on social media for Sarah Brown? You might have Kathleen Murphy, and she's the person who is super busy and does not have time to read all of the emails and marketing things that you're sending out. So what are you putting on social media that targets Kathleen Murphy? Roger Newman is um, change challenged. He doesn't like change. He wants things to stay the same. Uh, if he is one of your primary customer bases, what messaging are you putting out that matches him as a personality, as a persona? Or maybe you have Salomon. He's everybody's favorite. He, he loves everything that you do. He engages all the time. What kind of content are you putting out um, that is specifically related to Sal? Uh, this is something that you can do on your own, or you can do it through the help of a marketing or advertising organization, a, a, an agency that can help you to identify personas. But it can be a really fantastic marketing tool to utilize with social media. So... A few things about the different platforms for social media. When you get a copy of the slides, um, I think the I think that the team at Grow Nebraska will be sending out a copy of the slides. When you get those, this is slide 21. Uh, and and I'm not going to go through absolutely every single one of these things in detail, but there are some specific things that you'll want to look at uh, on each of the social media platforms that makes them a little bit unique and a little bit different from every other platform. Facebook is the largest uh, platform and the most frequently used. The largest age group um, that exists on Facebook, I think. Think that I think that information on my slide is outdated. I think it used to be 25 to 34. I'm guessing now we're probably looking at more like 30 or 35 to you know early 50s. 
it does still skew about um, a little under half female and a little over half are male. Seniors are the fastest growing demographic on Facebook, which I think is why it's now skewing a little older in age. Uh, it still remains the, the home base for pretty much everyone's social media, unless they're, you know, millennials or Gen, or, or Gen Z, um, that it, it is the primary target uh target place for most social media. Twitter has the largest age range, so it, it also tends to skew a little older. Uh, it is predominantly male, uh, so, you know, more like 60 to 70 percent of your Twitter users are going to be male. 80 percent of the comments that happen on Twitter come from 10 percent of the accounts. So it has a high level of influencers and power users. So people who Twitter is their primary social media and they use it a ton. Uh, that, that makes Twitter a really interesting uh, platform to use. The other thing that's interesting about Twitter is that the information appears on Twitter in a chronological order. So it is literally the next tweet comes into the feed and it works its way down. So if you don't catch people at just the right time, sometimes your information can get lost on Twitter because of that chronological um, feed. It's just something to be aware of. Instagram, the largest uh, age group is 25 to 34. Uh, it is predominantly female. So you're probably looking more like 55 to 65% of the, the population on Instagram is going to be female as opposed to only about 40% of men. Uh, Instagram has a ton of influencers, which are people who have large followings and they post on behalf of themselves or brands uh, to promote, you know, purchasing consumer products, those sorts of things. And they really influence buying behaviors. We see that a ton on Instagram. Uh, it, we also see a ton of buying influence happening on TikTok. But again, I'm not even going to go into that because it's, it's its own beast. LinkedIn tends to skew older. So 45 to 55, although I was just talking last night with a group of college students who are getting ready to graduate and every single one of them had a LinkedIn profile. Millennials make up about a fourth of the program uh, or of the platform. So it's going to be, you know, heavily in in that new business or or business age. Um, it, if, if you're, you know, even early college, high school, those kinds of things, you're not going to find those folks on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really reserved for those people who are in, um, I, I would say, the prime of their business career. It's a great source for lead generation. And especially if you're doing business to business sales or products or services, uh, LinkedIn is the place to be. All right, I want to give a quick word about Snapchat. Um, so you can utilize Snapchat to do things like provide a behind the scenes look to your followers or, uh, you know, during live events, show the kinds of things that are happening. The other cool thing that you can do through Snapchat is creating what are called geo filters. So it allows your followers to locate your business and promote the fact that they are in your business or they purchased an item. Uh, I think Wax Buffalo has some geo filters set up around their candle shops so that when someone, you know, takes a picture of a candle, they can send that snap out to their friends and it'll automatically identify that the picture was taken at Wax Buffalo and probably allows them maybe some fun filters or something like that, um, that, that they can utilize to, to send with their, their post. So there are some cool things you can do based on promotional geography related to Snapchat. When it comes to Pinterest, you want to make sure that you are using naming conventions. So Pinterest is a platform where basically you can find things that exist on, on the internet. Uh, it's used a ton for recipes, clothing, um, new products, uh, style kinds of things, home things in particular. Um, and it's a, it's a great place where people go to kind of collate uh, lots of ideas, lots of um, aspirational kinds of things. So if you happen to be like an interior designer or you own um, a, a a store that sells home goods or, or home kinds of things, you definitely want to be on Pinterest. You want to give people examples of how they can purchase your products and utilize them in their daily lives. You want to name and capture your pins and descriptions so that they're easily searchable and people can find them. 
uh, I love the idea of sharing customer stories on, on your Pinterest account and how people can find or purchase your products. Educate your audience with news and tips related to your business. Uh, Pinterest uh, has a really loyal following and, and a really specific targeted demographic. It also tends to skew predominantly female. And, um, and it's, it's great if you're you know, selling a product. So Facebook is still the behemoth. If you are doing no other social media, you need to be on Facebook. Um, I do not at all believe that Facebook is overhyped. 91% uh, of local searchers use Facebook first to find local organizations before they go search online. So it's the same for businesses and, um, and, and organizations alike. 91% of people are going to go to Facebook before they even go to Google or something like that to search for a business. 68% of people will take the time to learn about a business or organization if a friend posts about it. So if I have a friend who posts about a new business in the community and they, you know, say that they were just there and they found this really cute item, I am probably very likely, 68% of people are going to be like me, we are going to then go to that uh, business's Facebook page and learn more about them. Um, it's really just letting someone else do the marketing for you and for your business. Now, I want to be sure that I emphasize that although it is really critical to have a Facebook page and to be present on Facebook, you do not want to have a Facebook page only and no website. I know that small businesses are sometimes tempted to do this to save money. Um, you, you, you know, would establish only an online presence on Facebook and not on, and not on the, the internet with a, with a website. It's problematic. And the main reason that you don't want to do this is exactly what this article said. You don't want to build your brand on rented land. Facebook can change the algorithms at any time they want. They can they can make whatever changes to who gets to have a Facebook page, all of those things. You are at the mercy of Facebook, and you don't want that to be the only online presence that you have. It is critical. It should be a, a social media outlet that you have and use, but it should not be the only online presence that you have. That is part of the reason that it is so critical to have a great website foundation is because you don't want your whole online brand to be at the whim of someone else's um, layout and delivery system, right? You want to be able to control uh, the information that you're putting out there and how people can interact with you. So Facebook is essential, but it is not the only online presence that you should have. I want to talk briefly about storytelling um, and social media storytelling in particular. You want to, whenever possible, include stories when you are posting on Facebook. Um, and if you say, gosh, I don't even know how I would go about telling a story. I love Humans of New York. Uh, Humans of New York began in 2010 as a photography project. And their initial goal was they wanted to photograph 10,000 New Yorkers. They wanted to go on the street, interview people, and their goal is they were going to create this exhaustive catalog of the of the people who lived in New York. But um, what happened is that it blew up, and Humans of New York now has 20 million. 20 million followers on social media. It has been featured. Uh, it has featured stories that have happened in over 20 countries. It is a great example of how you can use social media to illustrate great stories with a single post. And their content is highly engaging and widely shared. So if you don't know how to even begin going about telling stories on your social media, definitely check out Humans of New York and give them a follow and the other thing I will say is if you're not sure how to do social media, number one, you need to be in those platforms on a regular basis. You need to familiarize yourself with the network. 
And part of the way that you do that is by following other organizations that are doing it well. So find other businesses that are like yours or even some that are different than yours and follow what they do. Learn how often are they posting? What kinds of things are they posting about? Um, you know, start to really get familiar with the platform itself. Um, and then you can start to set the strategy that you want to utilize for your business. I love using Facebook photo galleries to help illustrate different parts of your story. And you can really get um, some great engagement by asking people to tag themselves in your photos. So this is an example that was put out by Cornhusker Bank in Lincoln. Uh, they every year do a campaign called A Day Without Shoes. And their whole staff literally wears no shoes in the bank that day. And they, um, they do like a walk and they do a shoe drive and some really cool things uh, around that. But you can see here that they have pictures of groups of people uh, and they they tag people or they ask people to tag themselves in these photos. Uh, and what you're really doing with that is you're just extending your reach. You're allowing um, that tag to share your information and message across multiple platforms and with multiple people. Make sure that your posts have a call to action. So whether it is shop now or, um, you know, learn more, whatever it is, I, I don't really love learn more as a call to action, but I think shop now is great. Uh, there are lots of ways that you can add calls to action through your social media posts. Um, people tend to be happier on Fridays. Uh, it's also a payday. So if you have a product that you want to sell to happy people, Fridays are the days you want to make sure that you're doing your promotional posts. Uh, there's some additional information on this slide uh, about, you know, timing and, and what kinds of things to post on Facebook. You want to make sure that you secure your username on Facebook. So, for example, you can see uh, this is one of my favorite breakfast restaurants in uh, in Lincoln, Good Evans. They're located at 70th and A. And they also have a location in Kearney. And you can see that up in the top section, maybe I even have a, oh, maybe I even have an arrow that points to it. I do. You can see right up there, it is facebook.com slash good Evans Lincoln. So that's how you find that Facebook page for Good Evans as opposed to Good Evans Carney. And it automatically goes there. It matches their name. So you want to make sure that you are registering your unique username. Sometimes that's called a vanity URL um, on these social media platforms whenever possible. You also want to be sure that you're updating your cover photo at least every few months. This is one of my favorite little shops in Lincoln, uh, Rose Joy. They are a floral design studio. They also do weddings and special events, uh, and they are always changing out the photographs that they use uh, for their cover images, and they're always beautiful, and they always make me just love the things that they do. So next time I order flowers, I want to order from Roy Rose Joy. The other thing is that you can configure your settings uh, on your so on your Facebook page so that you encourage that participation. So you want to um, probably allow visitors to um, to publish posts to your page uh, so that if somebody comes into your shop and they buy this really cool thing, they go, uh, say it's a throw pillow, they go home and they put it on their couch, they can take a picture and tag your business uh, in that photo. So, you know, allow visitors to, to, to tag and to publish posts um, about your business. If you're really nervous about that because you don't want to, you know, you don't know what you what content you might end up in, uh, you can click that box there where it says review the posts by other people before they are published to your page so that you would actually give approval um, and review each of those posts uh, before uh, before, you know, anybody, anybody else would see it. So there are some safeguards that are built in there, but you want to make sure that your profile is set up so that you're encouraging that participation. Uh, there are different templates that you can use on Facebook. Make sure you're using the social or the um, small business template and um, apply that template and it'll, it'll really help you. All right. Now we're moving on to Twitter. Uh, Twitter, again, I think that there are is a word of caution right now for Twitter. I don't think that it is the platform um, that everyone thought it was even three months ago. And so 
um, it's taken some backlash. So just be sure that you know like who your customers are, will you find them on Twitter, and that you stay apprised of what the overall general feelings are around Twitter and using Twitter before you go down this hole. Uh, Twitter is a great place to get engaged with your customers. Um, and if you have news or resources, those are the kinds of things that you want to post on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is not really a great place that's just going to drive, you know, regular return on investment. Um, but it is a great place to interact with people. I know that if I have needed to ever get a hold of a brand or have a, a communication or an interaction with a business, Twitter's the first place that I think about going because I feel like I can get to someone who can answer my question on Twitter faster than I might be able to on any other platform. So keep that in mind. It can be a great place to interact. One of the challenges with Twitter is that there is a character limit. So ideally, you want to keep your messages at 280 characters or less. And when we say characters, I mean letters, spaces, um, emojis, uh, what else? Uh, you know, punctuation, all of that is a character. And so you want to keep it under 280 characters. But this might be an example of something you would want to post. It's time to stock up on all of your holiday essentials. Remember, we're closed on hashtag Thanksgiving. And the Friday after Thanksgiving, I put in a couple of fun hashtags, hashtag food coma, hashtag Husker football. Um, that's a, an example of a, of a news related post that you could put on your Twitter feed. You want to use hashtags, particularly around special events or key items. When I say hashtag, for those of us that are, um, you know, a little older, you can tell by the color of my hair, I'm, I'm in that category. So uh, a hashtag is, um, it's the number sign. <laughs> that's, that's a hashtag. What hashtags do is that they group content together. So if I use the hashtag Thanksgiving in this post, and someone goes to the search function of Twitter and they search for hashtag Thanksgiving, they're going to find anyone else who used that hashtag in their post. Um, so hashtag food coma or hashtag Husker football. If anybody searches for those hashtags, my post may come up in their search results. Uh, there are some other ways that when you're searching, you can narrow it down, like just to search people you follow or those kinds of things. But um, it, hashtags are, are amazing. They're particularly great for special events or key timeframes that you're wanting to, to look at. And then this is slide number 38 when you get the slides. So this is a list. If you don't know what you could possibly tweet about, that's what you call it when you make a, a, a post on Twitter. It's called a tweet. And if you don't have any idea what you could possibly tweet about, here's a list of 10 things. Upcoming events. Ask for people's opinions. Link to some great story you put on your website. Maybe you want to call out a staff member or a great customer and give some recognition. You want to make sure you use keywords. You don't want to be boring. Um, but there are a number of ways that you can really utilize Twitter to help you promote things. A couple of Twitter power tips. Choose a short username. So um, our CEO, Jay Wilkinson, um, uses at Jay Wilk because it's fewer characters than at Jay Wilkinson, Firespring CEO. If he uses that, he's already eating into his character count. Or if someone wants to tag him, they're eating into their character counts. So you want short usernames on Twitter. You can also use third-party tools to post and read, uh, particularly on Facebook. So something like Hootsuite or Buffer, those are third-party platforms that you can purchase where you can schedule out uh, your, your posts and it'll also help you do some tracking of posts and, and kind of collate your, your information. Uh, and you can also use that to, to post across multiple platforms as well. You also want to use keyword rich data in your biography. So Jay uses our company name, Firespring. He uses the word impact. He uses marketing strategies and he uses do more good in his bio so that people who might be searching for those things on Twitter will find his profile.
The next platform I want to talk about briefly is LinkedIn. Uh, when you go to LinkedIn, I recommend that every business of any kind set up a business page on LinkedIn. And then you want to make sure that your people connect to that business page as an employee of your organization. So this is my LinkedIn page. Um, and you can see that I I go a step further, a couple steps further. I've, I'm sort of, you know, living the brand there, aren't I? So my cover page on LinkedIn is Firespring related. And you can see that I tend to wear branded apparel because I do a lot of webinars. And so, um, you know, everything that I do ties me to Firespring um, because this is very much a business related uh, platform and I want everything to tie back to the business that I work for. So don't be afraid to ask your employees to make sure that, um, you know, they are engaging with you on that LinkedIn platform. Things you can do to enhance your LinkedIn page, describe the work that you do, explain who you are, uh, share photos and stories. You may notice that that is a theme across multiple platforms, photos and stories. Link to your website. So make sure people can go from your LinkedIn page to your website. And it's particularly a great place to look for employment thing, employment related things. So now hiring, for example, is, is a huge opportunity on LinkedIn. Uh, ask your customers or your employees or other businesses to follow you. Um, and you may even ask for them to help promote your business. Uh, and this is an example of one that just happened this week for Firespring. Although we did not ask for uh, this, this partner uh, or, you know, colleague company to post about Firespring, they did that on their own. Um, they also posted about Dacos, uh, this, this other certified B corporation. And so, you know, I, Think about ways that you can engage with other businesses, especially if you're B2B um, on LinkedIn. It's also a great way to, to connect with potential employees or potential vendors. So this is a photo of my friend, Tracy. Tracy is a photographer and she is a freelance photographer. So her profile photo says open to work. She wants people to talk to her about uh, engaging her for that consultative service. But it's also a great place to find other people who are open to work uh, and looking for other employment opportunities. Look for that little, you know, that little green open to work symbol. You can also start by connecting with your established networks. So if you're just getting in and just getting started on LinkedIn, you know, connect with your employees, your coworkers, past and present, uh, clients, customers, friends, just other contacts, uh, really work to build up your, uh, your network. Um, and just as an example, um, you know, this is uh, is my colleague Claire. This is her. Uh, this is her LinkedIn page. You can see we have a number of connections that we share in common, and and there's her information. Something cool that you also might know not know about LinkedIn is that you can export your connections list. Um, you can export your connections and, and actually create a list. So this is really going to be a, a fantastic professional um, networking and connecting tool. Uh, Instagram. Now we're going to talk about this platform. If you are hosting an event have followers use a hashtag for their, their pictures so you can crowdsource images. Uh, the thing about Instagram is that you cannot do a post on Instagram. Absolutely everything that comes across the Instagram platform has to have a photo or video attached to it. So it is a very visual platform. Um, you can, it's great for promoting events, uh, for doing branding campaigns. You can do photo captions, those sorts of things. Uh, this is a, a post that was done by one of my favorite shops in Seward, Nebraska. It's one of my favorite uh, little shops that I, I go to a lot. Uh, and they had this great, um, this great photo of, uh, you know, clothing that I can go in and buy today. Uh, and it, it looks so cute. I want to, want to go check it out. Um, on Instagram, a couple of things you want to keep in mind whenever possible, add your location, uh, tell a great story. Stories are always better for engaging people. Uh, utilize and encourage hashtags. So, you know, it might be like hashtag Thanksgiving or a hashtag, um, you know, new merchandise or, or whatever it is. Uh, make sure to tag other people. Uh, maybe it's a customer or a coworker or something like that. Um, 
this is another example. Um, the chocolate season is this great chocolate rest, uh, chocolate business and restaurant uh, in uh, in Lincoln, and they have they talk about like where they started with their first location. Um, they told this really really compelling story about how they got their start. The one thing that this post does not do that I wish it did is there's no direct call to action. So it's interesting to me, but I don't have anything that it's asking me to do or a way to engage, even if it's just, you know, give this post a like to support our, our business. Uh, and they definitely utilized um, some great hashtags in, in this post. Uh, social media storytelling is is critical and you can uh, it's definitely I think Instagram and Facebook are the best places for social media storytelling. Um, oftentimes you can get kind of that swipe up like where you can even sell products through Facebook and Instagram. Uh, utilize calls to action links in the bio. Uh, that's the other thing about uh, about Instagram is that you cannot um, put any links in your post. So if I do this post about, let me go to this next slide or this next there. Okay. So if I do a post about, um, you know, how you can swipe up for this, this, um, this product, if I, if I'm posting about this great product, I cannot put a link to the product in the post. But I can direct you to go to my bio and I can put a link to the product in my bio. So there are some ways to get around um, that no links in posts uh, thing on, on Instagram. If you're not sure how to do that, just follow a few businesses and you'll see very quickly how, um, how other organizations do that. Uh, Instagram is also great for connecting to other businesses. This is Wax Buffalo Candle Company again. Uh, I love how collaborative they are as a business. And so you can see that they're promoting other organizations' um, holiday markets and, and, and you know promoting other businesses. What a great message that's sending. And it's also um, connecting Wax Buffalo to all of the people who follow these other businesses that they have tagged. So you want to be sure that you're using great content regardless of your social media platform. 80% um, of the content should be about you um, and your constituents. And then 20% of the content should be related. 80% um, is about you. 20% should be related to your audience outside of, of you know, your, your business, your promotion. Uh, next, you want to engage people. I love a good question post. Uh, if you want to go out and follow me on LinkedIn, a lot of my content is nonprofit related. But if you follow me on LinkedIn, you would see how I use that platform and how I develop thought leadership there. And you would also see that almost every single post that I do includes a question because I want people to engage with me. I want to talk about things. 53% um, of those who engage with small businesses via social media report that they are inspired to take further action um, because of their social media posts. Um, and you also want to be sure that you answer people's questions. If someone posts something to your business on social media, you want to respond. Even if it is, we see this post, we are going to send you a private message, right? If you don't want to air any dirty laundry uh, in front of the world on social media, just at least acknowledge the fact that you have received that. Because if you don't acknowledge it, you have the potential to turn your customers, uh, you know, against you or away from you because you're unresponsive. You also want to make sure that you know your voice. Who are you? Are you really professional or are you really authentic? Like Firespring's kind of the people next door on social media. We are not like overly professional. We do not use overly complex language. We would probably tend more toward the humorous or inspirational as opposed um, to, you know, really, really strict or professional. Um, and is your voice appealing to your demographic? Uh, is the voice that you're using appealing to the group you're trying to communicate with? You also want to be transparent. Um, social media can be a, an amazing place to build trust, but that trust is really built when you respond quickly, 
when you maintain a positive air, when you're proactive in dealing with what uh, issues come up on social media. And 41% of small businesses attribute social media success to a detailed strategy. So you want to make sure that you have a plan, you have a strategy, and you develop consistency. What is the worst thing that someone can say about your organization online? You're probably thinking all kinds of horror stories in your brain, and it's probably not what you think. Nothing. If people are not talking about you, they're not engaging with you, um, they're, they're not searching you, they're not looking for you, that's the worst thing that could happen. That is way, way worse than someone posting that they didn't like something or that they had a bad experience. Um, you know, it, the, it, is, it is so much worse to not be there at all, to not even enter into the arena than it is to, to have a, a potential negative, you know, interaction that you have to deal with. So if you have been staying away from social media because you're worried about what happens if someone gives us a, a bad review or what happens if somebody wants to fight with us on social media, number one, it doesn't happen nearly as often as you think it does. And number two, um, I would take that any day over them just not being able to find me and not saying anything about me. So you know, definitely, uh, you know, be careful about um, not going in because you're afraid of what might happen. And the last word of caution is to just also be really thoughtful about what you're putting on there. Um, you know, don't, don't do posts spur of the minute. Don't, don't kind of, you know, react on emotion. Um, Jay Wilkinson, our, our founder and CEO always says, that trying to take things off of the internet is like trying to take pee out of the pool. It's impossible. Once something gets on the internet, people have the ability to screen capture it. Um, you know, they they can they can find it. And so, just make sure that you are being really intentional and thoughtful and careful. Here's our action steps: Make sure you have a website that'll make a great impression. Commit to to doing some thought leadership. Identify your audiences and what are the goals that you have on each of the platforms. Make sure you've got a Facebook page. And if you're not the admin, you need to have multiple people associated with your organization who are admins. Set up a LinkedIn company page and start to connect with your customers and supporters. Monitor Twitter, use it for, for news purposes. And finally, keep learning because you are all members of Grow Nebraska and we have a partnership with Grow Nebraska, you can actually get a, a, a membership benefit on any of our Fire Spring services. So if you're looking for a website, if you want printing, if you want marketing services, if you need somebody to create your social media plan or give you strategic guidance or do social media or storytelling or whatever it is, you can get a 20% discount. So you can learn more if you go to firespring.com slash grow Nebraska. And we do all kinds of, of services all under one roof. So small business websites, marketing, printing, everything. And here is all my contact information. And I've got like two minutes. Sorry, I meant to leave more time, but I've got two minutes for questions. And I'm going to send a copy of these slides um, over to Grow Nebraska this afternoon so that they can send them out to all of you. So do we have any questions? Yeah, everyone, let the questions begin. Don't see any yet. Okay. Um, I don't see anything in the Q&A panel. Is there anything in, nope, just Janelle in, in chat, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, if, if we don't have any questions, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's, it's a ton of information. Uh, it's a little like drinking from a fire hose. And I always tell people that at Fire Spring, we look at it that we would rather give you lots of ideas and lots of things that you can, that you can, you know, build on as opposed to having you come away and feel like you just didn't have enough content. So uh, there's a lot here. I am always happy. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you have specific questions, you can drop into the direct messages and, and send me questions. I'm always happy to, to answer questions there. Uh, or you could just reach out to us at Firespring and, and um, any number of us be happy to help you out. Yes. Yeah, I don't see any. So maybe we'll just go ahead and wrap up. And like she said, you can contact her directly for Absolutely. any questions that may arise afterwards because it usually good. happens. Yes, absolutely. 
Okay, well, thank you, Kirsten, so much for taking time out of your day to present for us. Um, we greatly appreciate it, and we're definitely going to have you back. You're actually down to do a training in February, so. Yeah, I can't remember what the topic is, but we'll be back in February with another <laughs> Yeah, so she'll be back, everyone. You don't have to cry or anything. She'll be back. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and share my screen and wrap us up. Okay. So, like I said, thank you, Kirsten, for um, putting on a great presentation today. You always do a wonderful job. Um, and thank you to everyone that tuned in live. And thank you to everyone that's going to be watching the recording. On the screen is my contact information if you have any questions or need assistance with anything. Um, and then our next upcoming training is actually next month on December 15th, which will also so be over social media. It's creating an effective social media strategy. You really can't learn too much on social media and it's constantly changing. So um, that is live on our website. So go ahead and get registered early and stay on the lookout for 2023 Grow Nebraska trainings. Um, we already have some lined up such as Kirsten. So we're excited. And then our last Grow with Google series is December 7th, and this will cover um, design thinking for entrepreneurs, and that's available in Spanish and English, and those are both live on our website as well, so you can go ahead and get registered early and get those reminders, and yeah, so that is everything. So thank you to everyone for tuning in, and we look forward to, to our next training. So thank you, and have a great rest of your week. Thanks, you too. Bye.